How many years does it take to do an update? Well, I'm pushing three, so hmm, maybe that's a new world record. Anyhow, for those who know of my previous videos, or even consider that have any clue of what I've done in the past, yeah, I changed my inverter. I had mentioned in one of them way back about using cheap Chinese. Well, cheap Chinese has come to bite me in the butt again because I lost both my inverter and charge controller. Forget my little children in the background, but you know, that's just how it goes. Yeah, and but instead of going for cheap Chinese or well, this is Chinese either way, but I went for more expensive Chinese and I have not regretted it because in addition to what my Frankenstein system did before this can do it easily and then it has even higher features beyond what my Frankenstein system did and one of that features is that it has a critical load out and what that means is that during an outage it will supply power uninterrupted via that critical load and given that my house is nowhere near the capacity of what this inverter can do my whole house is on that so when the light goes i don't even notice other than the fact that this ac light goes out but my house continue running now what i also love about this is that it has built-in surge arresters, both on the DC side and on the AC side. So I have some level of lightning protection and I don't have to worry about installing lightning arresters. Now, if you're looking at this, yeah, the wiring still looks like a Frankenstein mess. And that's because it was a lot neater. And there was going to be a power outage for an extended time hence that's the reason why my house is on the critical load because i just rushed it in to get it installed to make it work uh that because i rushed it in i didn't skip on certain aspects and that is my wire sizing i have 16 mm squared on the critical load 10 mm squared from the utility because realistically i don't pull that much from the utility it doesn't really require that much current the only time when I do pull a lot is when I'm doing battery maintenance. Um, I have some lead acid batteries, two forklift batteries. And when I have days of poor sun and I realize, you know, I have the batteries in for too low, I have a tendency to actually charge it up from the grid. I don't mind peeing for a little power from the utility just as long as it preserves the life of the battery. And I do like doing um, full charge, especially when I, after watering, um, I like to charge up the battery all the way up to 100, like when I water it or top up the electrolyte, you know, I mean, use some technical terms there, electrolyte, anyhow, whatever. All right, so let's have a glimpse of what's happening here. Sorry about the blur using my phone camera and I guess it doesn't have autofocus. Anyways, what's happening here, as you can see, looks like mm, something heavy is running in the house. Probably might be the electric heat or the water pump. So as you can see, we're pulling there the majority of that power from the battery because it's late evening. So the solar is doing book use and the house is being fully satisfied. Nothing is coming from the grid. So yeah, I can, I'm very happy with the capability of this inverter. It even had the ability for a generator port. So if, the, if there is no solar and my battery starts to run low, it can actually trigger a generator start and feed directly into the inverter. So the inverter acts like a generator transfer switch to charge up said battery. I mean, damn, convenient. So how do I charge up my battery? Well, what I can do in this lovely graph that you cannot see, <laughs> but pretend that you can, I can set the percentage of the battery state 
here in these time zones right here and I just enable grid charge here. So during that specific time zone, it will charge the battery up to X percentage, which would be 100 during my maintenance, to charge the battery up. Isn't that convenient? Um, also, I have the ability to limit the inverter power, but who would want to do that? And I have external CTs. So what those external CTs have should in circumstances where the potential to overload the inverter is high, I wouldn't really connect those big loads here. I would connect them out in the breakout there and then clamp my CTs between the, the utility meter and that breaker. So what would happen is that if a high load comes in, this inverter will try its best to match it but all the excess will be then pulled through from the utility, but it wouldn't, that high power wouldn't pass through here, so I wouldn't run the risk of overloading the inverter. And, you know, the only real thing that would happen is that you see this peg out to red. But even though this would be saying, you know, excess of, let's say, 10 kilowatts, because this is a 5 kilowatt, none of that power would actually be passing through here. So what would happen is that this will be producing its max if it can do it based on the battery and the solar, right? And the other five would be coming through the utility through the main breaker. And that will keep this safe and protected. So let's go here. So here we can see the general Battery spec, state of charge. You get an idea of what's happening on the in solar panels, the house, and whatever. It makes no sense I go through all that because, like I said, you, you can't really see. So let's take my word that it's pretty functional. And here, coming down here to my my spaghetti wiring. Um, over here. These are going down to the batteries, which, what, what size was this again? Um, it's actually welding cable 2 knot, So that's pretty big. I know I'm going between metric and wire sizing, but it's what's on the wire. So that's just what it is. I'm not going to convert it right now in my head. I'm not that smart. So like I said, my house, majority of my house right now, it's on the critical load through a 16 mm. Um, the utility is coming in here with um, 10 mm, line one, line two, line one, line two, neutral, ground. Um, over here is the, is the CT wires. This loose wire, which I need to cut down, was what I used to run here, but that needs to get out. Don't need to use that. And then we have my PV wires coming down. On the roof, I have 3,200, which is really strange because last I know, I know how to do maths, and it's really 3,000 watts on the roof, but I have peaked out at 3,200. I mean, I don't know, maybe I got lucky and somebody undersized some panels or what, but damn, I, I'm happy as a lark for that. But yeah, that's the upgrade. This is the new system. I'm pretty happy with the inverter, can't complain. And maybe I'll do some more updates in another three years. <laughs>